Welcome to a new episode of Film Seizure at the Movies. I am Jeff Arbuckle, co-host of the Film Seizure podcast that you can catch each Wednesday morning with my cohorts, Jason Oliver and Chuck Moore, and my solo show, Monster Mondays, each Monday afternoon. You can catch both of those shows at filmseizure.com. This week, I'm taking a look at the latest adaptation of Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile, directed by and starring Kenneth Branagh as Christie's Belgian super detective, Hercule Poirot. Now, this is the sequel or follow-up, if you will, to Branagh's 2017 adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. Now, I kind of have a long history of at least being able to recognize Hercule Poirot, Uh, mostly thanks to my dad. I believe he watched the David Suchet version of Perot on PBS, and it might have played on the series Mystery, uh, but I do know that he rented the series on DVD. And I think dad was also quite the fan of another Agatha Christie uh, character, Miss Marple. However, I don't know if I knew much more about Perot uh, beyond being the guy who one had a funny mustache and two had a funny accent and three pretty much always figured out the case or solved the murder or whatever. Now I recently watched murder on the Orient express. So let's talk about that one for a few minutes. Now that was based on Christie's 1934 novel and featured a great cast that included folks like Johnny Depp, Judy Dench, Olivia Coleman, Daisy Ridley, Penelope Cruz, Willem Dafoe, and Michelle Pfeiffer. This is probably Agatha Christie's most famous novel. It's neither her first, nor is it Perot's first case. Um, I don't know if most people would even know that uh, Murder on the Orient Express is a Perot mystery if you ask them on the street. I think you'd have a far better chance of people knowing that this was an Agatha Christie novel than them knowing that this is a Perot story, uh, if not for this movie. But what's it about? Well, it's heavily influenced on the 1934 Lindbergh kidnapping in which a man kidnapped and murdered the firstborn child of famous aviator Charles Lindbergh. Now, I am going to be spoiling the 2017 movie, so if you don't want to know what happens in the movie... Eh, you might want to turn down the volume or skip ahead a minute or so. But the primary difference is that the killer was not caught, um, and or at least in this story, and ended up under an alias on the Orient Express as a part of a large conspiracy by a number of people who were involved with the family of the kidnapped daughter. They perpetrated a revenge killing, one that Perot figured out, and while thinking it over long and hard, offered a different explanation of the events to the police, which the police then accepted. And that was in hopes that the conspirators find some semblance of peace and begin the healing process from the terrible events of the young girl's death. Interestingly, if we want to talk about the Lindbergh, or if you want to talk about the Lindbergh case, well, it's actually kind of theorized that possibly the wrong man was arrested, tried, and then eventually electrocuted for the kidnapping and murder. Some of these theories range from quite plausible to possibly ludicrous, but I digress. Death on the Nile was a 1937 Perot novel, and that novel is considered among the best uh, that of the Christie Perot mysteries, but... How does this new movie work? Well, generally, I like these Perot movies from Branham. Uh, There are three main things I found myself really enjoying and really kind of getting into while I was watching this movie. First and foremost, you got to give a lot of credit to Branham himself. He absolutely throws himself into the role of Hercule Perot. Uh, I really feel like he deeply cares for this character. Perot is a... Uh, is somebody who's kind of full of these little ticks and quirks. He speaks plainly, but also, at times, sardonically. He's somebody that you may want to be around, but you maybe don't want him around for too long either. Uh, there's a long stretch of this first act of this movie that you see, you just are seeing Perot watching people. He's not saying too much. He's just observing. Uh, this is seeing him in his element and it's why he's the world famous greatest detective 
And as you watch him, watch pretty much everything around him, you want to know what he's looking at. You want to know what's important about what it is that he is studying. Um, and that's just actually just a simple part of the larger cast. I found myself mostly interested in the female characters of this movie. Sure, from the male side, you have a doctor, you got a lawyer, you got uh, the hunk that is kind of at the center of this movie's love triangle. But on the female character side, you have a wealthy aristocrat that's uh, turned into a communist that is constantly talking sarcastically about how workers are treated and uh, talking about wealth and how wealthy people act and so on. Uh, there's a blue singer that seems just as interested in Perot as he possibly is in her. And her road manager niece, who is the object of Perot's friend uh, Book's affection. Uh, there's also Annette Benning playing Book's mother, Euphemia, who is a bit of an aggressive character. It's got this kind of nice blend of different types of characters that were uh, really just kind of interesting to watch. However, the two main characters that I found myself constantly focused on whenever they were on screen were the two women vying for Army Hammer's Simon's attention and love. And that's Gal Gadot as uh, Lynette Ridgway and newcomer Emma Mackey as the da damaged and dangerous femme fatale Jacqueline de Bellefort. Uh, I think it's obvious that the women... Uh, that the woman who is best known for playing Wonder Woman is going to be eye-catching in a movie. And I've not always been a great big fan of uh, Gadot's acting, but uh, she was actually pretty good in this. Uh, she's kind of in this constant cycle of being kind of this uh, aristocratic kind of partier or kind of a life of the party while also trying to get comfortable and even in a couple of scenes getting frisky with her new husband uh, and in perpetual fear for her life when her husband's ex-lover Jacqueline shows up unexpectedly. However, I really found myself attracted to Mackie's Jacqueline character. Uh, and that's probably the machination of the character herself. As I said, she's damaged and pretty deranged. Uh, yet she kind of wears her passion on her sleeve. The first time you see her in this movie, she's engaged in a really sexy and kind of sweaty dance with Army Hammer at a nightclub. Whereas uh, Gal Gadot is glamorous and this kind of otherworldly beauty. There's something, as I said, dangerous and overtly sexy about Mackie in the role of Jacqueline. Uh, even when she wasn't front and center or engaged directly in the action of a scene or whatever the shot is focused on, uh, my eyes were drawn to wherever she was. Uh, she would stride into a scene and she does so at one point early on and you just think of all the ways that she's about to mess up whatever is happening with these other characters. Now, the third thing I really found myself getting into uh, with this movie is the look of this film. Uh, there are some very obvious CG created scenery of this movie as they kind of travel down the Nile. Um, where, where that bothered me in last week's movie Moonfall, I felt it really helped create this very specific palette that gives this movie the look of something that just simply isn't real. I think that plays in this movie's favor because of the extraordinary, uh, air that's created by these wedding party goers that, uh, and they're being able to go to a place that most normal people can't easily go to and do so in a manner that only a very small number of people could. If I could find one word for the look of this movie, it would probably be fanciful, but it's also fun. This is a costume drama. It's like being invited to a murder mystery party, but all your friends are major movie stars. Uh, and while I'm being kind of overly gushy about this movie, it really is mostly light entertainment. Uh, this isn't going to be one of the greatest movies of the year, uh, but it was fun. And I enjoyed watching Brano's Perot. And it's just a classic mystery with interesting characters, which, of course, is pretty much probably what Agatha Christie kind of specialized in. Uh 
in the end, it's light, it's breezy, and it was a fun couple of hours at the movie. And if you like the Perot character or you like some of the actors in this movie, I would definitely give this a recommend. Now, don't forget to follow Film Seizure at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can be made aware of new episodes of our various shows as they drop. You can also follow us at podcast providers like SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, and Audible. You can also listen to the show on YouTube by subscribing there. And I'll be back next week with a look at the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But until then, don't forget to save me the aisle seat.